What if I told you that colors black and white in English and Spanish are actually the same? What? They're totally opposite colors. Well, obviously, they're totally different colors. But a few centuries ago, the distinction wasn't so clear. How is it possible if there can be two colors more different than black and white? Colors, yes, but I'm referring to the words used to distinguish them, to the extent that it became a problem. In fact, if you think about it, the words black in English and blanco in Spanish are quite similar, but they mean negro and blanco, black and white. Do you want to know more? Stay tuned and I'll tell you. What does that mean if you lose your accent? Crónicas lingüísticas. The one to blame for this is the Indo-European root bel blech, which meant to burn, sparkle, or shine. It turns out that black comes from Middle English, centuries 11th to 15th, black, blake, which in turn comes from Old English, centuries 5th to 12th, black, black, meaning black or dark. This, in turn, comes from the Germanic blacka, derived from the verbal form black, meaning burned. In fact, in Middle Low German, there was the verb blacken, meaning to burn. And it is believed that the meaning of this verb evolved to blackened by the fire and later simply to black. At the same time, we have another parallel term in Old Saxon, and that was black, meaning ink. Surely the name of the color also derives from the color of the ink that they use for the tattoos. But where's the problem or confusion with white? If you remember, we saw that in Old English, black was called black, and it was also written this way sometimes. So far so good? But what I haven't told you yet is how white was called. The Old English way of representing the color black often created confusion with these other words, also pronounced black, meaning bright, luminous, pale, of little color. Sometimes it was even written this way. While in Middle Low German, blacken meant to burn, at the same time, in Old High German, the term blacken or blachen meant to dazzle, shine, or be shiny. Due to this influence, at this time, the word blanca or blanca was used in Old English to refer to horses of pale color, a word that Roman languages like Spanish would take for white. Later, in Old High German, the word black underwent a mutation evolving to blank or blanc, meaning pale, colorless, or white, which later evolved to the current English word blank, to refer to emptiness, like when we say a blank space. I've got a blank space baby, and I'll write your name. You see, at that time, the concept of color was not the same as it is today, nor were there as many. I mean, colors existed because they were in nature, but perhaps there wasn't a need to distinguish so many nuances of the same color. Nowadays, we distinguish many colors and practically have a name for each of them. Before, as we've seen, the way to refer to them was through nature itself, like black, which we've seen meant burned and later darkened by fire before meaning black. But why then is white called white in English and not blank? Surely, due to the confusion problems that we saw earlier, in Old English and because of the use of the language, they probably opted for the new word for the color white. And this word was wit, meaning bright, radiant, clear. And it has its roots in the European white, meaning shine. It later evolved into Proto-Germanic white, and also into Old Saxon and Old Frisian white. In Old Norse, wit, Dutch, Wit, Old High German Wies, German Weiss, and even Gothic Weiss. As we see, the problems of word choice and the emergence of new words are nothing new. But as always, the use of language itself takes care of restoring the balance. Hope you liked the video, you learned something new, and see you in the next one. Ciao! When I wake up, I